Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and we're going to talk about the pains of private label. I have so many stories of people and clients and people coming to me talking about private label and they were promised the moon and the stars and the sunshines and the rainbows and hey if you just follow this plan you will have your own private label brand and you'll make millions of dollars and all will be well well if you are someone who received such a promise and it didn't turn out the way that you wanted to i have some good news for you there are answers and solutions even if you have a garage full of dead private label products we can help you, but I want to go through some of that. If you've heard or watched or seen some things on YouTube or podcasts or, you know, seen some experts talking about private label, full disclosure here, I believe that private label eventually is the absolute best way to have your own brand and your own branded products. But in my own experience, it seemed to be very expensive and very time consuming to start there. So. What you're going to hear today is that I'm going to suggest that you not start there because we're going to go through the facts that I have found about private label, my own personal experiences, facts I found throughout the internet, and plus literally dozens and dozens of people who have come to me and told me their story about private label. I'm going to share some of those things. But first, before we get into the nitty gritty of private label and the pains of private label and what you can do instead or together with your private label brand, we're going to talk about that. So if you have ever heard that private label is like the holy grail, the top of the food chain of Amazon selling, you're really not wrong, but it takes some stair steps to get there, right? You don't just start out at the top. Most people try to want to, okay, if this is the fastest route or if this is the best route, what are my steps to get there? But the reality is Amazon has layers and layers of complication and it takes some time and money and energy to learn something like private label and having your own brand and brand establishment. And guess what? The wholesale bundle system is actually what I used to call poor man's private label. I'm not sure if you've ever heard that, but when I first started, I wanted to be in private label even years ago, 2014, when Mommy Income was born. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to get this private label thing. And unfortunately, as I was doing more and more research, I had a product idea. I was going to bring it to the table. I started doing research and realized it's going to take a long time to develop this, to get samples, to have it ordered, to have it custom made, to have it fixed, to have it tweaked, then to have the real one and then order that, get it here, pay for all that. It takes almost a year, almost a year. There's research and development and packaging and branding and importing and shipping and launching and VAT taxes or, you know, customs and all kinds of different things. Now that's not bad and that's not wrong, but I, the question I have for you is do you, can you tie up about 15,000 to $20,000 for over a year before maybe you see product and profit? Oh, that's what got me in the beginning. I was like, I really want to do this and I think this would be fun. And I agree that it's probably, you know, you get the lion's share of the profit when you're bringing your own brand to the table. The problem is, I don't know about you, but most people don't have that much money to start off with and that much time before they even see a dollar back. It's like more, most of us need to see profits sooner than that. So what are we going to do about it? Well, Poor Man's Private Label, AKA Wholesale Bundle System, was developed by my disappointment in the private label process as it was then. Now, I know that today, in this day and age, at the end of 2023, that getting product for lower minimum order quantities and getting products developed and imported and brought to the Amazon table is faster than it was 10 years ago. I mean, let's just be honest, it's faster now. Everything's faster now. We have the internet, we have this and that, but there was also this thing in the middle called COVID that changed a lot of supply chains and how um, overseas importers do business and what they're expecting. They, they got stuck with a lot of products that couldn't get here, that they couldn't import. There was tons and tons of money lost on both ends of the spectrum when it came to COVID both manufacturers and sellers and business owners and you know things like that. So 
just wanting you guys to be aware of some of the facts and some of the stories. So there's one lady, we won't, I'm not going to give any names here because one of you, it might be one of you, <laughs> I'm telling you a story that you told me, um, just using, you know, anonymity here so that, you know, we don't throw anyone under the bus. But I had a client come to me in tears and she's just like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I went to so-and-so, um, I took their private label program and I followed all the steps and I ended up with this product and it was supposed to be great. And I followed their launch, you know, thing about spending so much money on PPC and, you know, different things to launch my brand and literally sold zero of this product. And I followed all of their steps. So now I have $25,000 um of this product in my garage and i still want to make amazon work and i really don't know what to do well first of all i commend you <laughs> that's what i said to her i commend you for even wanting to try again because who would who would want to try again after they spent 25 grand plus the program plus all the other stuff that you spend money on in order to launch a product for only it to like never sell at all and then when we dug through some of the who what when where of all that we realized that they weren't teaching private label at all. They really were just teaching white labeling, which I don't have a problem with white labeling. Actually, I love white labeling for so many different things. Now, the difference between a private label and a white label, I guess, would be the white label is um, Dove shampoo makes Dove shampoo. And you can buy the same exact formula of Dove shampoo from the manufacturer in your own packaging with your own branding. So I can call it Crystal, Kristen's Curl Cream Shampoo, and I can change the branding and the size and the shape of the bottle, but the formula is still the original Dove Shampoo, the shampoo that you know. So it's just like a formula that they have, and it's just a private label, a white label company. They sell the same exact product to whoever wants it, and the only difference between the product that you see on the shelf Dove versus Kristen's Curl Cream is branding and names. That's all that's different. Branding, colors, shape of the style of the, the packaging and brand. The formula is the same. It's the same exact shampoo. So that would be the difference between white label and private label. You can go to a company that manufactures granola bars and it could be the same granola bar that that uh, Quaker Oat makes or whoever makes the private label and you can just slap your own brand on it and and if you're good at advertising and good at branding and good at getting your name out there you could have a million dollar brand because you're not actually reinventing the wheel you're just using something that's already produced and you're putting your own brand on it now the companies there that sell the actual manufactured product they don't care they don't care what you do with it. It's not proprietary. They give you the same formula. You can just put your name on it and move it to if you're good at branding, if you're good at um, marketing and have a catchy name and you have a big advertising budget and you can get your, your brand out there, a good following. It's also good for like influencers. So if you're an if someone was an influencer, they're just on there, you know, you have all kinds of different things. You could actually just get a white label product, brand it as your own and sell it to your own audience. So that's kind of white label. Now, private label is generally from the ground up, not necessarily reinventing the wheel, but say you're going to sell, you know, coffee mugs, uh, but you want to design your own coffee mug. There's a certain shape and size that they don't already make. And so you're going to have to manufacture it. Now, coffee mugs are not new. So let's just pretend let's let's not, you know, beat around the bush about that. Coffee mugs are not new. But if you're going to bring something new to the table, plus put your own branding on it, plus have it be a different shape or size, or, you know, maybe you would, this is just out of left field here, but like maybe you're going to make a mug that has two handles, one on each side. It's just like the double handled mug, you know, maybe it's novelty, I, I don't know. But they don't generally make that now. So a private label would be something that you're not only you're, you're changing something that already exists and you're bringing a brand new something to the table. You're manufacturing it in a different way. You're tweaking it in some sort of way. Uh, you're, you're changing something about the original design so that it is your own. And that still comes with all of the other things. Manufacturing something from the ground up that's special, that's different, that's something that they don't manufacture anywhere else, takes a lot of time, money, energy to get developed. 
I finally, after so many years in business, launched my first private label product right before the pandemic and uh, the end of 2019, beginning of 2020, before everything shut down. So it was an unfortunate year um, to be able to launch a private label product. But y'all, that was a long time in. I sold my first product online in 2003. So I am 20 years in. And it was only three and a half years ago where I started developing my own private label, custom, no one else has this, no one else is manufacturing this in this way, style of product, true private label. But everything I've done before that has been either a white label or wholesale bundling. Why? Because I didn't have deep pockets when I first started. I didn't have thousands and thousands of dollars to spend. So I had to start where I was and use what I had. And what I did was I looked at what other wholesale products were already out there and how could I combine some of those to make something more valuable to the customer. And I didn't start with all my own products. I started with things that would be convenient and solve problems. So my, one of my first bundles, I had a couple first bundles. One of my very first bundles was a multi variety pack of granola bars. They're like like um fruit granola bar kind of thing. They sold at Costco and there was like four or five flavors and there was always one that we didn't like. And so I was like, well, we want this whole box because these are cheap to buy all these, but there's this one flavor that none of us want. So we can we put it in a package and sell it these two flavors together versus Zoey's ones. I didn't want to waste them. I didn't want to throw them away. And so we started making multi packs of different flavors of like granola bars or like breakfast bars or what they were. And we ended up going into like the fiber one and Belvita and things like that. Now that was, you know, 2015, right? 2015, 2014. Uh, another one of our bundles was Shopkins toys, these little tiny mini toys that little girls and little boys like to play with and, you know, it's almost like, you know, Legos are tiny. So what goes great with Legos? Um, a carry case, a storage case, somewhere where you can clean them up and put them away and get them off the floor. And so one of our other bundles was a carry case with um, some Shopkin toys. And that one was the best seller we had for that particular Q4. It was a toy, so that of course helped. Um, but we used the Shopkins brand with a carrying case at that time. Now, so many things have changed since then, which is why I'm constantly updating the wholesale bundle system because it is up to date as far as today's rules and regulations on Amazon when it comes to bundling. And if you haven't heard the episode of what is a bundle and what is not a bundle, because there's tons of confusion out there and there's people teaching bundles that aren't actually bundles and breaking rules and I don't want your account to get suspended. So please listen to the, the previous episode. It's like, what is a bundle or what's not? Are you bundling wrong? Um, it's the previous episode from, from this one. So go back one episode, listen, are you bundling wrong or what is a bundle, what's not? And you will learn like just an overview. Like if someone's telling you this is a bundle when it actually isn't, you're, you, you could get in trouble. You could have your account suspended. You could have your ASIN suspended. They could suspend your brand. They could revoke your brand registry. This is one of the newest things that Amazon has been doing based on um, false, from what I understand, it's false filings or not filing correctly with your trademark and things like that. And they're, they're pulling people's brand registry, which then means that all the listings that you have from your brand registry are not valid. Would that be a problem for you? I mean, it for sure would be for me. So private labeling. You're, you have heard, you're going to hear, you know, this is the best way, build your own brand, sell it on Amazon, things like that. There's all kinds of different business models on Amazon, you know, everything from retail arbitrage and thrifting and books to KDP and writing your own stuff to um, advertising and people have advertising agencies, they sell wholesale, they sell private label there. I mean, there's so many ways to sell on Amazon and I have tried all of them. I started with retail arbitrage and thrifting. I've been a thrifter since I was a young child. I started, I got my start on e-com on, on eBay. I'm still selling on eBay to this day and I love that, but for a different reason. I love eBay, but I also realize it's limitations. There's a lot of limitations when it comes to eBay. Like um, 
Amazon is just better for brand new wholesale kind of products and move more volume to where eBay is for me a little bit more of, you know, your obscure weird items, some, you know, jewelry stuff, things that I pick up that are vintage and hard to find and stuff like that. That's more of a treasure hunt for me or just like flipping old toys. I love doing that and I just, I've done it for years. So there's that, but then Amazon's another stream of income. I've written books where I, I get a constant royalties from Amazon on KDP. So that's a business model and an income stream and an option. I've done retail arbitrage and thrifting and moved away from that because Amazon became more strict about proving the authenticity of items. And if you are buying a Sony stereo from a garage sale and selling it on Amazon and someone says, oh, this isn't real or this is fake or it's broken, Amazon's going to be like, hey, show me your invoice and you're not going to have one. So on Amazon, that doesn't work. Because they're going to want you to have proof and show that, that you got this from a legitimate source and that you're um, following all rules and regulations. So Amazon, I would say, is a little bit more strict about their pro policies and about their rules and about stuff like that. But it's still almost 200 million Amazon Prime customers you have access to. Everybody has Amazon on their phone. Everyone. Everyone buys from there. Like, tell me someone who doesn't. It's very rare. So because of that, we're going to play on their playground. We're going to play safe. But what is the best way? Everyone claims to have the best way. And I'm not telling you I have the best way. I have found the correct formula that finally got me from six figures to seven. That might not be right for you, and that's fine. But it was right for me after trying retail arbitrage and being very successful with retail arbitrage. I was. But as Amazon started to change their rules, I was too scared to lose my account because I had a cash register receipt from Walmart that they decided to reject. They don't have to take that. They can request an invoice. And if you don't have one, they can say, sorry, invalid. If you don't like their rules, don't play there because they do have some and they will enforce them and stupidly most of the time. You know, this guy can get away with it and this guy can get away with it. But then when you do it, they, they shut you down. Well, the rules are still the rules. And even if someone else is getting away with it, doesn't mean that that you're exempt as well like if you're speeding on the road with 10 other people and they're all going 80 miles an hour and you're the one that gets the ticket you can't just say well 14 other people were also going 80 yeah but i i nailed you and i'm giving you the ticket and you're the one i pulled over so um ignorance and or excuses and or everyone else is doing it still doesn't exempt you from the penalty so there's your tough love there so we want to follow the rules but why the pains of private label a lot of people get in and they think, okay, I'm going to go this step-by-step -step process. Does somebody have that? I don't know. Wholesale bundle system does. Step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step of all the things that you need. But even with private label, I'm sure there's amazing programs out there. I know people in the industry in Amazon that are teaching private label that are amazing people and amazing teachers. And I'm not saying they're doing anything wrong. I'm just saying that I personally, after all the experiences I've had on Amazon for literally 20 years in e -com, would never ever start someone out with private label. Now, if you already have your private label brand and you're bringing it to Amazon, that's a whole another conversation. Let's have a coaching call because that's way easier. Earlier this year, I'm, I, I have a case study that we're ending towards the end of 2023 and I can't wait to share like a, a um, let's talk to Adam again. But at the beginning of the year, he, he has his own brand and he had never known how to sell on Amazon. So I worked with him personally, helped him get his brand on Amazon, get him trademarked, get him all this stuff listed, shipped it into Amazon FBA. And we'll do a follow up in January or February on his one year kind of anniversary of Amazon and see how far he's come. Because he already had a private label product, his own brand and products, but he wasn't selling on Amazon because of all the complications and rules and whatever. So if that's you, or if you already have a brand and you just don't know how to sell on Amazon or not sure how you can make bundles work, Bundles are the answer sometimes to people's pri dead private label products that are sitting in their garage. Those products are probably still very useful and very helpful. But if you're selling something that you just private labeled or white labeled that everyone else has, how are you going to stand out? How is someone going to find your product versus someone else's product? And if you answer PPC, I swear I'm going to crawl under my table and cry. PPC is not the answer for people seeing your product. It is one of the solutions, but not until you have a kick butt listing that looks good, that has great pictures, great keywords, that's very direct, that's very organized, that's very optimized. And then, and only then, do you throw money at PPC to get your listing um, seen by more people. 
so many people just launch a brand and try to just start there and pay a bunch of money to have PPC only for their listing to absolutely never be seen. I have so many stories. This recently, someone had spent like $5,000 on one particular product. And when they went to launch it, turns out that product is absolutely restricted and you can't even sell it. So now they have $5,000 of products that they're not even allowed to sell, but they were led to believe that this was the right way. So what do you do about those items? Can you bundle them? Can you put your private label product in a bundle with some other wholesale items that make it a, an accessory pack, a gift set, a um, you know a combination of something? I I had uh, one client who made um, a product that enhanced a board game that him and his family were always playing, and he had this like foam thing manufactured or whatever. And then he was supposed to send that and have it be part of the bundle with the board game and everything else. But then that got restricted. He used a brand that he didn't have permission to to build an add on. And then when he went to sell the product, he couldn't use that brand name. And without that brand name, his product was pretty much dead in the water. So you got to know the rules. You got to know the regulations. You got to know the policies. You got to know what's allowed and what's not allowed. And you need to know the categories. You have to know those things. We teach you all of those things in the wholesale bundle system so that you don't you don't leave any stone unturned. You will be trained properly to list a bundle. And what a bundle can be anything. We had one another client who has like a makeup and cosmetic brand, all organic, all brand new, whatever else, and selling really good like eyeshadows and lipsticks and things like that. But like the individual process and products were killing them because it's like, okay, you're selling an eyeshadow for $9.99, but then the, even the small and light, it was like expensive. They were only making a couple dollars to where on their own website, they were making far more. So like, how do we do this on Amazon? Well, bundling your best small products together into one combo, number one, raises your average selling price to like, instead of it's $10, now your average selling price could be 30 or 40, but you're putting three or four of your makeup items into one bundle. So that's, that's another way to utilize your private label bundle with, with, wholesale bundling. You can actually have your own wholesale, own private label products bundled into your own bundle under your brand. And we teach you also how to build your brand, how to create a brand, how to decide what the name of your brand is going to be, even down to the custom packaging that you will need to sell your bundle in. And it doesn't have to take two years and it doesn't have to tie up so much money. This is a inexpensive way to launch your own brand on Amazon using products that you don't have to curate and develop from the ground up. Somebody already makes notebooks, somebody already makes pens, somebody already makes candles, somebody already makes bath bombs, somebody already makes socks or shoes or earrings or you know school supplies. Your job as a bundler is to put those things together in a way that's really convenient for the customers to buy them and then list them and sell them on Amazon under your own bundle brand. And when I say bundle brand, that doesn't mean that you're going to like put your bundle into Target on the shore shelves. Now, if you want to, there's definitely plans and processes for that. But if you're just wanting to have a bundle brand on Amazon that's protected under all of their um, brand registry and trademarks and things like that, we walk you through that in the wholesale bundle system, of course. But if you're having pains with private label, you need to understand what process that, that it takes to develop a private label product from the beginning all the way to your launch and to your shipping of it in your products and everything else. It's a very long process. And as long as you're aware of that, that's great. But I never, ever suggest that people start there. Why? Because if you don't know how to, if you don't know how to, um, you know, build the foundation of your business and start small and grow, it's going to fall from out from under you, even if you launch a really good private label brand. Do you know how to put FN SKU stickers on your items? Do you know how to quality control check your, do you, do you have an, uh, an, 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 what is that called? What do I have to do for that? Oh, inspection. <laughs> like, sorry, I just had a brain fog for a second. Um, once my private label product was done, I had it manufactured in China. I had to hire a private, um, I was going to say investigator. Why can't I think of this word? That's so funny. Um, I had to hire a private inspection company, it's something I learned along the way when you have a private label product and then you create samples and you get the sample back and you approve of the sample and they actually go to full manufacturing. 
you should hire a um, inspection company, a private um, separate inspection company that will come before your items are shipped to you and randomly select 10 to 20% of product that your manufacturer made for them to inspect and make sure that the quality control is good before they ship you thousands of dollars of products overseas. Um, this is just one of the steps that you have to learn along the way that takes time. They go in, they take pictures, they send you a full report, um, and then you have to, after that, have your stuff shipped. So everything takes way longer than anyone ever says it does. It really just does. I've known, if you've ever done a home renovation project, you for sure know that everything takes longer than what people say they do. I just want you guys to be aware of some of the pains of private label and what they are. And it's fine if you want to go down that route. But bundling is always an excellent option, even for private label people, even with people with private label brands. There's always ways to bundle. Number one, you can join with other bundlers and have your makeup brand or your bath bombs or your candles or your um, socks or your t-shirts or whatever that you're making and manufacturing you could actually reach out to other people and say hey i see you're building bundles would you consider one of my items in your bundle then now your brand is going out to people that are selling that there's so many possibilities if you have the ideas even if you don't even if you don't there's tons of ideas in catalogs. Again, don't forget about the workshop. That's where you go and see buildings upon buildings. I'm talking like three or four buildings with floors, 17 floors of vendors. Don't tell me you can't find product to sell. I will call BS on you right now. Go to Dallas Market Center, go to Atlanta, go to Chicago, go to um, Minneapolis, Vegas, probably trade shows in your area or the internet. Alibaba, DHgate, Seller, um, not Seller Central, <laughs> Global Selling Partners. There's so many different places to find product. So many. I've taught you many of them already. Um, but finding product is not really the problem. It's kind of developing the idea. What do you, what problem are you solving or need are you meeting with your bundle? Bundles are not a way to get around Amazon's rules. They're supposed to provide value for the buyer. Makes it easy, convenient for them to buy product. So if you have had experienced pain in private label or you're just not sure, I first of all, if you're new, I never, ever suggest that you start there. I want you to go there. I want you to develop your business at the point where you can afford and you can confidently move forward with a private label product. And I will be here to cheerlead you all the way. But I never, ever suggest that people just start out of the gate with private label. Let's be real. You have no idea what you're doing. If you're new to Amazon, you need to learn Amazon first and then start digging into private label products and things like that. The best way to do that is either with some sort of wholesale product, arbitrage, or small batches of bundles. Y'all, I'm talking $500 or less. You can do a bundle. Maybe even less than that. I have people building bundles from the dollar store and killing it. And their cost of goods is $3. So don't give me excuses that it's too expensive, that it's too this and that and the other thing. Private label is absolutely the, the most time consuming and the longest process and longest business model to sell on Amazon. Bundling is simply a version of private label in a easier, faster, and much less expensive way. You can test small batches. You don't have to buy 10,000 of anything. Y'all, I test sometimes 24 bundles at a time. Like units, units of sale, 24 actual units of a bundle, not hundreds, not thousands. I'm not a volume seller. We are a margin seller. So we sell 100 to 150 SKUs of products that try to make at least $10 each. I don't have to sell 150 units a day. Just a few of several SKUs built over time. So I just wanted to bring you some, some of these things to light to where if that's you, if you have had a private label product that's dead in the water and sitting in your garage and you're just wondering what to do with it, should you throw it away or have you invested all this time and money and you still haven't felt successful? Let's have a conversation. Let's talk about wholesale bundling and how that can change your Amazon business or be another income stream that you can do. And guess what? It doesn't even have to be hands-on. 
I don't touch any of my product anymore. It all goes to the prep center, a third party prep center. They bundle all of my items together in my own custom packaging and send it to Amazon on my behalf so I never have to touch it. I occasionally do go to my prep center that's close to me. So I occasionally go there and check out some of the products and things like that. But I see a lot of my products at trade shows. I get samples if it's something I'm buying and importing. Um, I will ask them and pay the extra for a sample of the product. So there's lots and lots of options and every business model is gonna have pain points. Let's just be real. It's just not easy to do business, but it's worth it if you're, if you want to do it yourself and you want to have control of your own business and you want to do it right and efficiently and um, you know continually test products to see if they work and you're not just going all in on one thing. I never, ever, ever suggest that on Amazon. They change so frequently that you just have to be on your toes about the different things that they have. And once you have established products on Amazon, then you can start moving them to other platforms like Walmart and now Target has third party selling and there's all kinds of different things. I just wanted to give you kind of the overview of the pains of private label and how wholesale bundle system is very similar to a private label style, but without all the headaches and craziness, without the deep pockets, without a 12 month timeline. Y'all, earlier this fall, we did a 40 day bundle challenge. In this 40 day bundle challenge, people were launching bundles in 40 days. That does not take a year and 15 grand. It takes 40 days. This doesn't have to be, it's not rocket science. It does take some training. It does take some time to develop all these things and develop your research skills and to look at keywords and to understand your avatar of your customer and what products you want to put together and what makes sense. Yeah, that's what we teach you, but it takes time to learn that, but not nearly as much time as it takes to try to launch your own private label product, one product, one branded product. So if you're interested, mommyincome.com forward slash system is our wholesale bundle system. If you've had any of these stories, I'd like to hear them. I would love to hear your story about private label and how mommy income can assist you in getting rid of product that might be dead in the water. We can resurrect it. There's something we can usually do with some sort of product. There's a bundle we can put it in. There's somewhere we can sell it. There's somewhere we can get rid of it. So just reach out. I'd love to hear from you. And y'all, I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing. And I appreciate you listening. And if this episode has been eye-opening for you or helpful for you, don't forget to share or leave a review or like it or do, do interact with it in some way, whether it's YouTube or the podcast and you leave a review or you share it with a friend. Um, we love to get the word out about the truth about this um, and just how we can help each other grow our businesses. So thank you for listening to the Amazon Files podcast. See you guys same time, same place next week.